Hi everyone, it's Andrew from NRC and welcome to my King Kong CA30 build uh, which if you haven't seen the unboxing and you're not familiar with what exactly that is well it's this um, lovely thing so it's 6x6 six six Chinese copy Zill 151 I could be wrong but I think it's a 151 um, but a Chinese copy uh, licensed um, you know it's a proper it's called CA30 in China. That's actually what it is called. So uh, it's true to, true to life. Um, I'll try not to call it a Russian truck. I'll try and call it a Chinese truck if I can. But uh, yeah, so King Kong, it's a 6x6, of course, full metal chassis, plastic cab, flat wooden bed. Now, this, this video is really, uh, or maybe a series of videos, I don't know how long this is going to take, um, is going to be the chassis. Okay, I'm not going to talk about the cab. I'm not going to talk about the flat bed. We're just going to do the, uh, the chassis. At this point, it's by it's Easter Sunday, six o'clock in the in the afternoon, and what I'm going to try and do, what I'm going to try and do, is something a little bit different for us on the channel. Terry's doing his mammoth build, which is great, and I feel a little bit inadequate next to that. Uh, our mate Steve, who is um, Mid Wales, uh, oh god, I've forgotten. I'll put a link down below. It's Mid Wales RC Crawlers, I think. Um, but uh, anyway, he's uh, he's doing it. TF2, I haven't researched this at all, have I haven't practiced this either. Um, you know, he's, doing, he's doing the RC four-wheel drive uh, Hilux um, TF2, so he's doing that, Terry's doing the Mammoth. I'm done fiddling with their WPLs for now, so it's going to be this. There you go. So one thing I will point out at this stage, uh, electrics I'm going to put in are going to be my leftover Sidewinder 3 for now. I I can't remember just how bad the drag brake is on this thing, but I want to try it. I want to run it again because it's really nice ESC, really smooth. And I'm going to couple that with Terry's um, Talkmaster Pro Holmes Hobbies 540-45 turn motor, which is a gem, you may remember. I drowned mine on the first run out and uh, it, it bit of dust. And a BEC, because these don't really have a very good BEC in them, 5 volts or something, fairly inadequate. Uh, so that's that's the initially what's going to go into this. I might put a hobby wing 1080 in should I require more drag brake than the side runner 3 can muster. Wheels and tyres, I have these are the standard tyres, these are the upgrade tyres you can buy, which are as you can see noticeably bigger, different tread pattern, much more authentic uh, Russian tread pattern. Mm, okay, this is probably very authentic Chinese tread pattern, but basically these are quite small and these are a bit more substantial. All six are done, mounted on the lovely, lovely beadlocks with all those individual nuts and bolts holding the bead together. The hub of the axle, which I have one here, goes through like so, and you end up with a rather attractive looking uh, wheel. So these are done, you won't see me doing these, um, already done. So just want to get that clear before we dive in. All right. So I'm going to switch to the overhead camera, which I've got an overhead up there. Um, and are you going to see me doing this in, in a speeded up fashion? Hopefully without all the mistakes. Hopefully without any mistakes, full stop. But uh, <clears throat> anyway, let's give it a go and try it. I'm not rebuilding this, so if it doesn't work, there'll be no build video. Sorry, guys. Hey, go. Right, onwards. Hi, welcome to the build. Now, what I'm going to just say now while I get on with the first step on screen I did separate all the bolts by head type. That seemed to be the most logical way of doing it since all the bags had sizes written on them. Um, so they have got my, diff my different sort of containers full of bolts there, you can see. I also realized that, that the part numbers in the instruction manual for the actual pieces relate to the same tray. Now, the trays are not labeled, but certainly everything with the same four letters will be in the same tray. Okay, first issue, um, step two. <laughs> Step one was a breeze, um, so I've got that fitted on. But um, step two involves the involves these little brackets, which are oh, you know nicely painted and finished and everything going on the inside of the chassis rail. Now it's not terribly important. What is important is it is a M two point five bolt that secures this to the chassis. Now clearly the paint has gone inside the threads and jammed the threads up a fair degree. I've just rounded off one of their little cap-headed bolts, one of their little round-headed bolts, I should say. So what I've chosen to do, I'm sure I've got another one of those bolts lying around, is pre-screw the holes on the other one, which weren't as bad, but used uh, a much stronger 
instead of a 1.5 mil head it's a 2 mil cap headed bolt uh, of, of a, a much greater size uh, you know um, strength so I am just threading this through to make sure that I can once it's in place I can get one of their little it's still tight coming out just to make sure I can get their little bolts in with their little flush heads right so what I've done is improvised I could not get three of the supplied bolts in to the back of that bracket okay they just would not they go part away and then they just start stripping so I've um, binned off using them and I'm using some much stronger uh, from the spares box some uh, slightly longer they're probably two millimeters longer thread uh, and they've got the big button caps on but they're two mil much stronger and a little bit of resistance but they just drive through so I don't if I look ahead in the instructions I don't think there's anything going to be snagging on these slightly longer bolts it doesn't appear to be anything sitting right here uh, so we might get away with it obviously if I need to put shorter ones in then I'll have to have a proper rummage about but for now okay bolt issues sorted we move on to step three which is the hinge for the front leaf pack which is quite a nice little thing and quite uh, helped bring back my faith in what I was doing I'm only on step three and I'm having to replace bolts it didn't really s start off that well got better though. right I just want to show you this a little bit um, this is some kind of hinging uh, thing sits on there goes through that hole and through there goes a little brass uh, tube now just to re readdress the balance I guess a little bit after those uh, these bolt failures um watch this go in there dry fit nothing no 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 lube or anything get the holes lined up and it just pushes in and it doesn't it's a friction fit it doesn't easily come out that, that that won't come out of its own you see how good a fit it is by how how nicely damped it is so you know that's good that's good machining these bolts uh, and that back bracket uh, not so good machining but this really nice you see a nice metallic uh, nice matte finish on, on this as well it's a handsome looking thing so far and here we go with steps four five and six which is putting a pin through the flappy hinge part i was showing you but it is for the front leaf pack to go into to allow further extension so it will need to be secured under load uh, so there's a pin with a c-clip goes through there you've got the beautiful foot plates which are cast in metal beautiful relief on them already flat black these these things are really really nice secured to the chassis with some of those dreadful m2.5 bolts i mean dreadful there's probably nothing wrong with the bolts i just on reflection i think maybe the 1.5 hex head is the problem it's just with the tight fit the 1.5 driver just can't get enough strength applied without stripping them uh, and then you put the plastic rails next to the foot plates for the plastic fuel tank okay so i'm through to part six now with uh, what i'm guessing is the left hand side of the chassis yeah just a, a word of advice if you're going to get this far with it to you want with the video i mean is to perhaps stock up on some uh, 2.5 8 and 6 millimeter long bolts okay um i i and i'd be putting cap heads in if if uh, if if push comes to shove okay not the rounded the rounded ones probably look a little bit nicer um a little bit more finished but uh they they're not as strong i don't think anyway so that's that's one side of the chassis um it's nice it's quite solid quite hefty and we are about to now start let's put that to one side we're about to get stuck into step seven right so here's the what i think is the transfer case forgive me if i'm calling it the wrong thing so these three shafts are rotating all in the same direction this one's going the opposite direction so maybe this is where the i think this is where the motor will go in i'm guessing if i connect this up wrong one of my axles will turn the wrong way uh, but i guess the motor goes in this one and that then means that these two go to the back remember there's a separate shaft to the far axle and a separate shaft to the middle axle odd not a there's no no sort of pass through of the middle axle it, it goes 
all the way past it uh, and then obviously to the front axle as well so those three are all turning in the same direction this one's going the opposite way so my guess is the motor goes in there so let's um it shows us an exploded view in the in, in the book it feels nice for completeness let's go into everyone says oh you break open all these things and check they're all greased so oh these are like little beadlock bolts five all right so does this pop pull off oh there you go jumping josephat the answer is yes right so i don't want to lose a whole bunch of stuff in here ah so it is it is quite nicely greased there's, there's a fair bit of can you guys see that let me just check you can see that <laughs> is the camera up to its job today yeah look at that so it's all metal in there which is beautiful you can see plenty of grease floating around uh, which is nice should we add our own might be rude not to now we're here isn't it right still turns oh you can hear the grease chattering right beautiful all right onwards so what you're seeing here is me completing steps 8 9 10 over to 11 which is putting the transfer case into the chassis onto the chassis rail with m3 bolts going no bother a fixed drive shaft which leads to uh, i guess an extension piece uh, which we're going to talk about in a minute this this extension kind of piece here looks like it reminds me of a turbo i don't know what um it's here right this thing here it, it's almost the same it's almost reversible it's got the same pattern the same bolts um, it, it's got the same kind of textured bolt finish on it. it looks almost the same but on my example the shaft stuck out slightly further on one end one side of it than it did on the other now I tried this originally with it long with the long stub pointing towards the transfer case and it wouldn't quite it didn't seem to sit this it stopped this bit sitting straight it seemed that it wanted it was just too far back the hole uh, so i've reversed this and put the shorter stub to meet this fixed drive shaft okay and then now the whole thing seems to sit a bit square i don't know whether that's intentional it doesn't refer to that in the manual it doesn't tell you to mount it one way around so maybe watch out for that if you're building this um, Okay, so just a little thing um, just to tell you about quickly. Um, I didn't read the instructions properly before I started and uh, I'd have done this I might have been able to get the right tool at the right moment. But um, basically, it's this, this rear bumper assembly is made up and there's, there's a ton of these little bolts. So I think the flatbed uses them. Um, these little, um, let me get this where you can see it. These little cross heads here, these little um, sort of inverted uh, scale bolts. I don't have a head for those. So I'm replacing them with silver Same thread, but with a button cap on from many of the beadlocks that uh, I've gone through so For now, that's it when the tool arrives. I'll get off green models. I think uh, midweek I should think and um, I'll, I'll go back and replace all these but for now. I'm just doing them Just putting them in place to uh, hold the various bits together um, so I can get the chassis together. All right, so I'm going to crack on, get this done. Uh, it's now five past nine after me finding about trying to find the right driver, which I don't have in the end. So uh, yeah, I'm going to crack on and call it a night. Thank you for watching part one. Glad you made it all the way to the end. Now as a special treat, you're going to get to see a few stills of the finished chassis out in the garden and also with the overlanding pod you've seen on the MC8. If you haven't seen it on the MC8, go and check out the videos it's a pretty awesome thing it fits on the back of this thing beautifully so there's a thought for the future now in part two coming up you'll see that i have found the little hex adapters they were in the kit all along stupid me and obviously the chassis will come together by the end of part two it will be as you see it now so thanks for watching hit the subscribe hit the little bell so you don't miss out and we'll catch you soon bye